Hey, hey, everybody. It's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And did you have a chance to look at the line application that I introduced yesterday? Well, I took a chance to try my first design. And this is a stamp that when I create a package, I can have it reviewed by the company line, which is the number one messaging app in Japan. And should it be approved, then I can actually make money for any download that people choose to pay to have the use of them. So I really encourage everybody to give it a try because it was very easy. And I can't say that I'm going to make their review successfully. But hey, if the people in Japan who are successful at this can make up to $80,000 a year, uh, it sounds like something I want to do. So this is Mr. Chibi. Mr. Chibi, he is asking, are we up? Well, we are up just barely. And I'm on the XRP uh, action price action page. And I, I want to point out two things. The first thing is this on-chain FX by the Masari group is probably the one of the most accurate when it comes to reporting volume. And you can see here that XRP in the last 24 hours is reporting a volume of 1.9 billion. So we are still up double of what we were last week, but nowhere near where we need to be to see some really serious price action. When we were over $3 back in 2017, like I have pointed out, the 24 hour volume was in the neighborhood of seven, eight, nine billion for a 24 hour period. So this is why I look at volume quite often. And I think Brad Kimes looks at volume also before his streams. I see that he accesses his app and is paying attention to that. And speaking of Brad Kimes, we are going to do a stream together. And I am to put some talking points together for him today. And I thought, wow, I probably would be very wise to ask the community what it is they want us to talk about. Now, I can't promise that I can cover um, any or all, but I will absolutely listen to what everybody is curious for in terms of discussion, because um, within about, a, what, an hour of time that we'll probably be talking. I think we can cover three to four topics in a deep enough level that it should be interesting. So I really want to invite uh, everybody's idea or thoughts as to what you want to hear. Okay. And just this story came out about two hours ago, and it is Ripple wins the 2019 Marketers That Matter Award. And they won it for the Swell 2018 Customer Event. These awards are uh, given out every year. They have many different categories. And within the categories, there is uh, a division of the large companies and the small companies. These are the judges that were chosen for the 2019 awards. That's the CEO of Evan Bright, CEO of Open Table, the CMO of Sephora, the CMO for Old Navy, the VP Global Marketing of Google, and also the CMO for Salesforce. Now they have a building brand B2B, a building brand B2C, a category also for customer experience, one for driving growth, which YouTube and Google were in that category the marketing campaign, and then the transformation journey. This was uh, the category that Ripple was in for the small company category. The big company category, uh, Lyft, was in that group. And the finalist in the category for Ripple came down to Thumbs Thumbtack and Ripple. Thumbtack is a company out of San Francisco. It has investment from Google. It is a matching service where if you need like a landscaper or a DJ or a gardener, they will match the service up with the customer. But Ripple took that award. So congratulations to them. And if you also saw the video yesterday, you uh, saw that I pointed out that there was a premium price for BTC and a little bit even for XRP yesterday with the 
um, surge of volume and pricing. And it's really interesting that that 4% premium on BTC actually caused what is now being called a sushi premium. It hit over 800,000 yen and it set the circuit breakers off. They were triggered on Bitflyer. Bitflyer was the website uh, exchange that I had on that video yesterday. And they are currently the largest exchange in Japan and they had to suspend transactions temporarily preventing um, you know, a sudden price change that they think might be due to misordering or something of the like. So for about five minutes, they suspended trading. And that occurs anytime the price surges up or down more than 20%. And last year, we saw this happen very often in Korea, South Korea, and it was coined the, the kimchi premium. And that came from Dovey Wan. Dovey Wan, I think, is in Hong Kong. I follow her. She's very quick and fast to get news from this part of the world. And uh, she called the um, premium price yesterday the sushi premium. And I even saw AMB Crypto picked up on that and people are starting to use it now. It's kind of kind of funny. Well, here is one story that reminds us all, never leave your digital assets on an exchange because the Gifu Prefectural Police actually seized virtual currency from a 20-year-old man that had an outstanding parking ticket. And it's not the first time that the um, police have actually confiscated virtual currency here. It's happened two other times as well. In this particular case, he got a parking ticket in 2014. They gave him 14 notices, but he never responded. So they went to the exchange that he had stored and left virtual currency on and they seized it. Yeah, about $4,000 worth, a lot more than his ticket. So it's just, yeah, you cannot leave anything on the exchanges you don't have control. All right, uh, this is just a little bit of a clarification and um, because I ran into some situation when I was making a comment out there on YouTube uh, that had a lot of Craig Wright supporters. And I just wanted to let everybody know because they, they were totally unaware. So I thought, well, if they are unaware, then I'm sure that a lot of other people are unaware too. The um, SBI president is, of course, Mr. Uh, Yoshitaka Kitao, and he was going to promote Bitcoin Cash, but of course, Bitcoin ABC and SV happened. And what that means is um, he's been very vocal that he really hated the fact that they forked. And there is a quote that was really being um, circulated within the news here. And it was quite obvious that not only did he officially delist BCH from the SBI VC trade site, but he also had said verbally in public uh, that he had decided to quit both. So it says here that coins that frequently hard fork are ridiculous. Yeah, I remember this comment. He, he was not happy at all. And uh, Mr. Kitao said, I was going to promote BCH, but Jihan and Craig ended up fighting and the ABC and CSV were born. Jihan side won and inherited the name BCH, but I decided to quit both. This caused the market cap for both coins to fall. Yeah, he was actually really furious. He even talked about how he thought that it was a big problem with their egos as well. Okay, so staying with SBI, there is, do you remember that Mr. Um, Takeshi Okita, he is uh, now, I think, the front man for doing a lot of good PR for the blockchain, DLT, and SBI, because I'm noticing he's in a lot of speaking roles as of late. And this is actually a G20's finance minister's central bank governor's meeting that took place in Fukuoka last week. Uh, this is an important meeting because 
this is the formation of what the um, talking points are in really getting down to details for the G20 summit that happens in Osaka, Japan in June. And Mr. Um, Takashi Okita was one of the speakers. So that's good. I'm really glad to see that we've got representation from the SBI Ripple Asia uh, entity. It's, it's, it's wonderful. And then there is another event coming up in June on the 10th and 11th. It's called the Global Digital Summit. And this also is going to have an interesting panel with the uh, ADA CEO, Charles Hoskinson, and Mr. Takashi Okita again. He is the CEO of SBI Ripple Asia. He also was on the board of Ripple before Mr. Kitao was announced. They kind of did a switch there. And he was also in charge of the money tap application. But I think there was an internal, well, I know there was an internal shuffle, which is very common here in Japan. And now he has a slightly different role. Okay, everybody, we are jumping to the fluff. I am going to back to Fukuoka. So Fukuoka is where they had the meeting to prepare for the G20. And Fukuoka is the island that is um, far south. Now, it's not as far south as Okinawa, but in terms of the main islands, it's the most southern island. And it's got a lot of rich uh, history. Um, yeah, it's very, very rich in traditional history. And one of the festivals that occur, you know, Japan has festivals in the summertime like you wouldn't believe. I really hope if you come to Japan that you should spend some time to research a, a, a particular festival that interests you. They're all different. And this one happens to be on the UNESCO um, intangible cultural heritage list. It is in the region of Fukuoka called Hakata, Hakata, yeah, Hakata, and it's 800 years old, or just shy of 800 years old. It happens on July 1st through the 15th, so it's a very long festival. Almost 3 million people attend, and it's where they, it's a very old festival, it's where they race through the streets with hand-carried floats, and these floats um, there's actually two styles. There's the tall style that go down through the, the covered shoten guy. They can be 30 feet high or 10 meters. They're gigantic. But then there's a little bit smaller version, about 5 meters or 15 feet high. These are called the Kakiyama Kasa, and they are um, carried as fast as they can be carried through a 5 kilometer course takes about 30 minutes. They start these races at 4.59, just a minute before five o'clock in the morning. And it is something to see. And it is carried by all men and they are all wearing what's called fundoshi. And these are the traditional um, festival wear and it's by neighborhood, by neighborhood, by neighborhood. So it's kind of neighborhoods against neighborhoods. And each neighborhood has a slightly different, um, these would be like the hoppy coat. And then the fundoshi is the bottom portion here. And I just want to show you how serious they are to race. These guys are sitting on the float. And they when they change out the... Uh, carrier, they don't stop. So they're running with these floats and you run as long as I guess you feel you can run and then other people will come in and take your place. But the float doesn't stop to make that switch. It continues to um, race down the streets and look at the size of the crowds. There are areas that you can uh, pay for viewing seats and i'm sure these are the viewing seats here but look at the size of the neighborhoods i mean we have we have summer festivals in tokyo and every neighborhood has them but the amount or the size 
in which these more traditional, I don't want to say rural, but it is much more rural than Tokyo. The number of participants from the neighborhoods is just mind boggling to me. I mean, in, our, in, in my neighborhood here, we, we might be lucky to see, um, get maybe, maybe 150 to 200 people participating in carrying the Mikoshi. But, uh, you can see from this picture here, there is just a sea of people. And I think this is probably just two neighborhoods because I see just two floats. So this entire group uh, is just representative of two neighborhoods in the area. It's unbelievable. I have not seen this. I, I really want to see it. And I just for just a quick second, let's just take a look here at one that gets going. You can see how fast they go and then they turn the corner. There are a lot of these videos on YouTube. So it's the Hakata Gion Yamakasa Festival. I'll put the spelling down in the um, description below. So if you want to look on YouTube to watch some other videos, there's a lot of videos listed and they're, they're pretty fun to watch. Okay, everybody, that's all I have for you today. Yeah, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.